Hi guys, this is NikitaNet and welcome to this episode of NikitaNet's Linux Shack. Today we're going to talk about Ethernet bonding on a Debian or Debian derived distribution of Linux. What I've got in frame is a very simple switch, a couple of network cards and a little bit of cabling. I basically have all I need, excluding the computer, to create a bonded interface on a computer. And why is this interesting, you might ask. And the simple reasoning behind using bonded interfaces is either higher throughput of data or redundancy, perhaps even both. So why does one do this? Very simple. If one has high availability services running on a computer with a single network cable, you run the risk that this network cable fails or gets unplugged or such a thing and the service is no longer available. Now under Debian or other Linux distributions one can bond physical NIC interfaces, so physical network interfaces to combine one or more virtual interfaces on a single computer. I've done this a number of times to solve the problem of well, high availability without redundancy, because of course by using multiple interfaces or multiple network interfaces or multiple network interface cards as one interface, if one fails you still got a connection to the network. So let's take a look at the configuration file, so that's etc network interfaces. And first we define of course the loopback interface which is standard. But the next interface we have to define is autobond, the virtual interface. I defined it with autobond, iface bond, inet static with an address, with a net mask, with a network, with a broadcast address and with a gateway. And then with slaves et H0 and ETH1. Those are the physical interfaces as recognized by the kernel that are included in the bonded virtual interface. Then we've got a number of modes for well the bonded interface. We can select bond mode active backup, bond mode balanced ALB and bond mode balanced TLB. Now I've had issues with the RTL8139 and those issues were leakage of the original MAC address and therefore, well, I use the bond mode balance TLB with a MII mon of 100 milliseconds and a down delay of 200 milliseconds and an up delay of 200 milliseconds as well. For my personal setup. I've also defined a TXQ length, len, length of 2000, sorry, 20,000 even. And there's a reason for that which isn't pertinent to this description of this configuration file, but if you want to add something after an interface has come up, this is the way to do it. Some other methods don't work. Now these up and down delays of the interface are there, the physical interfaces are there to cushion any type of latency or small errors that might creep up over time and are single instances that are recoverable. So that's nice to have there with these types of values. After the virtual interface bond zero is defined we have to define the physical interfaces and to allow for hot plugging of the Ethernet cable or replugging when it has come undone, you need to allow hot plug ETH0 with an iFace ETH0 iNet manual because of course this interface, this NIC doesn't get its own well, network address in this setup at least. That is defined in the virtual interface, right? So 
allow hot plug ETH0 with an iFace ETH internet manual with perhaps a uh, post up command as is defined here for the physical interface with a TXQ length of 2000. But after that we also have to define the second ETH1 interface which is specified in a similar manner. Now please note that you do have to configure these addresses for your personal situation. These are some generic suggestions that might not apply for your specific situation. So check them and change them as required. So this is Nikita Net saying, I hope you found this video informative. I hope you can now configure a bonded interface or at least have an idea of where to start. So thanks for watching, like this, like this video, at your pleasure of course, subscribe to the channel and uh, well, see you in the next video. Bye bye.